Hello everyone, I'm Harvey Brownstone and today our guest is a witch. Yes, you heard me correctly. She's known as the Good Witch of Hollywood and she's also a psychic and a medium. She knows all about casting spells, creating sacred places and helps us peek through the veil into the other world. She's best known for her recurring role on the Travel Channel's number one show, Ghost Adventures. She wrote an international bestseller entitled Old World Magic for the Modern World tips, tricks, and techniques to balance, empower, and create a life you love. She's the host of Psychics Gone Wild on Blog Talk Radio, and she's the president and chief examiner of the American Federation of Certified Psychics and Mediums. I'm bewitched, but not bothered and bewildered, to welcome Patty Negri to our show. Patty, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for that beautiful intro, Harvey. I'm like, I'm blushing. Thank you. <laughs> Patty, what exactly is a witch? What a witch is. What a great question to start out with, because people really don't know. It actually can mean a couple of different things. It could mean I'm a witch, meaning in the religious and spiritual background, like I am Wiccan or I'm a ceremonial magician, which means it's your belief system, kind of a, a pagan elemental based or a spirit art based, like what Wicca is since the last, you know, 1500 years or so, or more old traditional British, or it can mean a practice, a practice of witchcraft. So therefore I know Christian witches, it's not their religion, it's their practice. And to be the practice of a witch means it is somebody who is willing to take fate into your own hands and shift it. I mean, you have to have integrity to do that and ethics and virtue and moral code. And if you don't, don't go that route. But if you really do right from wrong and know that you are shifting a pattern of natural life and taking full responsibility for it, nobody's going to forgive you. You do it, you know, do something bad. That's what it, it is. It's a it's a practice. Same as shamanism. There's lots of words used for it. My best little example is okay to, to practice the craft the, the difference of a good witch and a not good witch the water is on the mountain and the water runs down the hill and feeds the village the beautiful village you have a house on the hill but it's just down a ways and you don't have that water to practice of witchcraft is like ah, i'm going to build a dam but i pick the pipes in and i'm going to put the water in my house to be not ethical to be a bad witch or dark magic is to take all the water and then the villagers don't get any and then the villagers all die and you have that on your hand or karma the villagers have come up and kill you and take over your house bad karma if you build the dam and you take the water that you need you leave the villagers all the water they need that's ethically practicing magic and you could get everything you want the universe provides it's again because the natural path of thing like the water on the hill runs downhill gravity takes in but if you go oh no i don't i don't want to just be sliding downhill i want to top of that mountain it's working with nature working with elements working with spirits working with i'm work very elemental of the earth elements in getting up to that mountain that's it how did you know you were a witch i think i was just born this way i didn't know the terms on the psychic side of things i've been talking to dead people since i was three or four i thought everybody could that literally almost cliche the the creatures under the bed and in the closet you know they aren't so much the imaginary friends that we just assume they are these were real beings and spirits that i could get information and my mom's like yeah grandma did that too but on the witchy side it's it's my connection to nature it's elementally based how much i'm affected by the moon i was this little kid and i would find myself in my little suburban backyard just grabbing rosemary off the bushes and mint off my mom's garden and stuffing it in her wallet knowing that that would bring her more money i had not yet read any apothecary books or herb books that these at these plants have that attribute it just was kind of innately in the blood in me and again i think early man had that we have a lot of what we call instinct intuition but in our modern world, so much has got taught out of us. We've gone all left brain with everything. We've forgotten that creative, intuitive, spiritual, artistic right side uh, so much. And that's where that innate knowledge is in all of us. Well, you come from a family of clairvoyance, don't you? I mean, your grandmother well, was a psychic. 
I read in your book that your mother on two occasions heard cracking sounds in her ears at exactly the moment that your brother was being shot at in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crackling was him on fire. And again, she never was a practicing psychic, nor was my grandmother, but they just had it in the blood. So yeah, I think it's just in the blood. We, we choose what I believe me, I have tried to do everything else in the world. It's like, I went into the medical field. Okay, that's not it. Okay, I, I retail. Okay, that's not it. I ran a production company. I still have it for 20 years. And because I'm all about it empowering people but but it's this side that came over yes it's not just empowering people with the hr department and creating a big show to show them you know motivational techniques with clients it's wow we are these powerful beings and we've forgotten along the way and that's my whole gig you know like remind people that we are magic now you describe yourself as a good witch mm -hmm. can you tell if somebody is a bad witch <laughs> I see energy in people, whether they use, again, the terminology doesn't really matter. I, I see energy, energy speaks. We know that we know that nothing's solid, right? We're not solid, wood's not solid, seventh grade science, moving at them, blah, 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 nothing's solid, it's all this moving. Our energy is just as strong as our words and our actions. You could do it, I mean, I mean, you're very intuitive anyway, but when somebody walks into a room, don't you kind of know like, Ooh, I'm drawn towards them or I'm drawn away from them or yes. ooh, there's a red flag and they haven't said a word yet. And if we look into that, we have it that our energy, almost like a scent or a smell speaks just as loud. So I could walk around and going, oh, mm, OK, I'm not I don't want to mess with them. I could just tell because I can't everything. It all even does go down into science, cause and effect, action and reaction. And again, people who practice to me in the dark arts, uh, end up cranky and like ugly not ugly and physical but just that energy it's it's icky you get you get paranoid you get mean you get defensive it's like i don't need to live in that world i i've i've got everything truly everything i've ever wanted by being a good witch working in positivity what you put out you get back well many of us either in our families or at work we do have toxic people in our lives. Mm -hmm. How do you neutralize or eliminate the negative impact of people like that on you? You put protection on you and it's really easy. Again, remember energy is just as strong as the solid because the solid's not solid. The best way for me, I have what I call mirror magic. Mirrors are reflective, real mirrors, but you put an imaginary mirror around yourself. Say if you're walking into your toxic workplace or you know places we can't control, I always run light through my body first. I just picture this beautiful explosion of light from my hair, boom, and I kind of snap my fingers. And I have this beautiful mirrored egg all around me. I empower that egg that nothing bad can get in. Good stuff can all get in, but bad stuff can't get in. It just bounces right off. Now, the reason I make it a mirror instead of cement or titanium is because it is a mirror. So if somebody is purposely throwing that shade at you or that jealousy or the bad vibes, they're actually on a non-conscious level, they're gonna kind of see, because it's a mirror, how unattractive they look as they're throwing that shade. And they're gonna, because it's a mirror, it's gonna kind of bounce back and just sing them just a little, just like, oh. And then they're gonna kind of look through that mirror and see, it didn't affect me at all. So they're not even getting the payback of like upsetting me, angering me, making me feel sad or hurt, which is basically why they do it. So again, so the next time they won't throw so hard because they didn't get the payback. They saw how unattractive they were in a very subconscious, unconscious way. You, it crazy how it works. You could practice it now that we're getting out of you know the pandemic again. I always say practice it in the elevator or like a concert. When you're with people who nobody's sending you bad vibes, they don't even know you. You know, get into a crowded elevator. I run the light through me. I put the mirror. People standing in the elevator next to you, literally they'll they kind of see the mirror they will smile and step back a little and because they're they're because you're not they're not sending back they'll see their they'll smile and step back and if they can't step back if you really are sardined into a, a chip you know the elevator all of a sudden your personal space isn't being invaded that's it you put that protection on you know do it in a concert and then, then when you walk into the workplace you know it's going to work i i work everything off that mind body spirit that 20,000 books are written about, even my book goes there with, a, we understand psychology, we'll never surpass our own belief system, never, we won't, it's, I can't do it, no, you probably can't, no, Ooh, I could do the, you know, we create that basic psychology 101, 
mind, body, we have to take action. You got to got to get off the sofa and nothing happens there. But the spirit, that's like the less tangible. People don't get that. And that's actually the battery that makes it work. When you have the mind, when you have the body, the, it's the spirit. In all actuality, you can get it a million ways. You can get it through your belief system, through faith. Go to church, go to temple, go to church, prayer. That is the faith, the battery that makes it happen. You could do very new age, affirmations and vision boards, and I can conquer the world, whatever that is. You're, that's the spirit, the magic that makes it happen. If you could do what I would do, a spell working, I've got my candle, I've got my herbs, I've got my oil, I've got my bells ringing, whatever it is. But when you, you literally, you could go through your, and that's the spirit that makes it happen. The mat is one third. To me, I just say one third, one third, one third. You could literally, like Harvey, you could look at your whole life, everything that you've accomplished and you've made happen, you've had all three, you've believed it, you've taken some form of action. And then there was a little bit of spirit magic or faith behind it. And the things you haven't quite made happen yet, just look at them and see, oh, then one or two things just need tweaking. Either I don't really believe I can have it or deserve I can have it, I've got to work on that. Or I'm just sitting on the sofa, not doing anything about it. Or I don't have that little spark of faith or magic to make it happen. And then you tweak those and you get it. That's what the secret is to me. That is what positive thinking, that is what the spiritual laws of nature, it's science. So does it bother you that generally speaking, there's a negative impression of witches based on stories like Snow White, The Wizard of Oz, the Salem witch trials? How do you counter people's impressions and assumptions that, witch, that the word witch connotes some kind of evil? Well, it, it it does much less than it used to, I must say. And with Withers of Oz, I mean, we, we, we've got Glenda, we've got the good witch, <laughs> you know, and you had the power all the time. Again, she's about empowerment, just like me, my car is named Glenda. I have that big dang pink dress. I do the big pink, <laughs> you know, you have the power all the time. And I think the bad connotations is because witches are powerful because we take our own power and as a society, as a controlling society, anything that's powerful is made bad. Anything, whether governments do it, leaders of religions do it, anything that's powerful is bad. So a witch, they can change fate. They can heal, heal. they can make illness go away. They can bring you luck and love. That, that's powerful, that's scary, so make it bad. The same thing with anything that we think of bad luck, like the number 13, breaking a mirror, a black cat crossing your path, None of those are bad luck. They're powerful. You could make them super powerful. A broken mirror is the most protective thing you could have in your home. But it's like what we as a society, we're afraid of that power and the shift and the not natural flow of going downhill. So we make it bad. Well, but, I want to ask you about that. You wrote that your specialty is in adjusting mm -hmm. energy and flow. And mm -hmm. you create spells and rituals that bring about healing and improve people's lives. How exactly do you do that? Okay. <laughs> we have a little mugwort. No, it's, we look at the situation. We, you know, I, again, I, I throw all my gifts into one pot sort of see. So if I'm working with somebody, we look at their patterns. Again, there's a little bit of basic psychology. One third, isn't it? We look at their patterns and then I see where there's blocks and both energetically in their body. Cause we hold things. Some people like, Ooh, they're holding that in their jaw. Ooh, and that's dealing with communication. Oh, that's stealing. They hold things in their knees. Their knees have gone bad. They're afraid of food moving forward. I often will take it back to a point in their life when something happened and it shifted their, their strength and their perception. Sometimes it's like, what happened to you at four? And they'll go, oh my gosh, we moved. And it was ever, there was rarely abducted by what happened to you at, at I, I'm seeing this age when they gave away their power and why. And then I literally will have them go back and talk to that four-year-old self or 12-year-old self and recreate the story like, okay. But because so often it's just, we get this self-limiting misconception, let's recreate that. And then I look, we start adjusting the energy therefore and create what we want. Again, we we are we are these divine beings. We are look at this thing that we are, this life. We are amazing. And besides being amazing that we're divine, we have free will. God, the universe, whatever higher power word you want to use for it, we have free will. That makes us like superheroes. Angels don't even have free will. They're dextral. They can do two amazing things. They can enlighten and protect, protect and do great things, but they can't cause shift and change. That's, we get to do that. It's amazing. 
Now you spell the word magic with a K at the end. Yes. Why is that? That started about in the maybe the 40s or the 50s. Some of, one of the early Wicca people decided the different ma magic, we were doing magic, but to, wanted to explain the difference of pull a rabbit out of your hat or a card trip magic, which is illusion magic, versus we really shift things magic. You know, if we're gonna pull a rabbit, if we're gonna pull a rabbit out of our hat, for real. So to, that's working into the magical, really shift, uh, manifest form of magic versus illusion, you know, Siegfried and Roy stuff. Can you tell us about your experiences trying to contact the dead? Huh? Yes, I've literally, since I was like a little kid, like I said, been obsessed with the other side and, and talking to dead people. And it never was in like a dark or morbid way. It just wasn't. It was just, they're there and let's talk to them. So I, I was seven or eight, it's in my book, and I wanted to do my first seance. I, I didn't really know the word and I went in my little suburban hallway and stuffed towels under the doors and and then I realized I didn't know any dead people. So I'm like, Marilyn Monroe and John Kennedy, all the people late 60s who were that I knew at the time as a little kid. And all of us, and I think I came up with my first sound or my first chant and my first, and all of a sudden my windowless, lightless hallway filled with lights and orbs and bouncing and flying through. And as I ran out screaming, because I was, you know, seven or eight, I was jumping up and down going, wow, this is real. And we can control this. We can control this. I firmly believe this is our realm of existence. And we're the bosses of this realm. So for the negative spirits coming in, we can get rid of them. Good spirits come in, we talk to them. It's that easy. So I've spent my life kind of studying religion, philosophy, science, occult science, metaphysics, and take it all down to energy, which is what I see. So it doesn't almost matter what template or word you put on top. They could be very scientific words or academic words or typical religion, Judeo-Christian words, or they could be new age words, whatever. It's it's the shift. It, it, it Again, it goes down to science. I've just learned a way to lift the veil that we can communicate with them that much closer. They love it. They're there. I mean, read the 900 books that people who, you know, died and said it's really great on the other side. You know, I went to the light. There's a million books. I haven't done it, but you know, and they, so dead people are fine. It's 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 hard for those left living. So why dead people like in whether it's seance or mediumship gallery or one on one. We, what we get from it is information. We get solace. We get understanding. You know, grandma told you it's okay. You weren't there when I died. I didn't want you there. Or, this is where the will is. I mean, I've gotten really, really practical information. Literally, this one young guy passed, disease, leaving a young wife and a young kid. And there he said, they sat with his iPhone and they didn't know the code with a thousand pictures in it. The spirit gave me the iPhone code practical information not just butterflies and fairies so they could get the pictures out that, that was pretty funny because that was about the same time a couple years ago when i remember it made national news or international fbi wanted apple to give an iphone code for some criminal case an iphone wouldn't do it and i'm like well they should have just talked to a medium and used a ouija board <laughs> But you get practical stuff because and what so we get out of it information or peace or solace or understanding what the other side gets for what dead get out of it is they get real time. In my experience, there is no time and space on the other side. There just isn't. They have they have don't have bodies. They could go past and future and it just doesn't exist. But having that one on one conversation, whether you're you know sitting in front of a candle talking to grandma by her picture or you're working with a medium or you know, doing your own meditation, what they're getting out of it is like, wow, this is real time conversation. Hi, grandma, is that you? Yes, it is. Where'd you hide it over here? So it's win win. We get all that information and they get like, oh, I'm having a real conversation with Fred again. Do you think that we have guardian angels, departed loved ones who watch over us and protect us and guide us? I definitely do. I think we have. I think they are there because I talk to them all the time. We have the ones that are right there by our sides and we have different kinds of people called, you know, called spirit guides. We actually have several kinds of spirit guides. We have what the one that's called the inner band, which is that's a spirit guide of some sort that's been with us from birth. They're with us all the time. 
There's an outer band and they're the ones that just show up when you need them. Like, oh my God, I'm in tragedy. I think this special spirit guide will come in. It could be a deceased relative. It could be an ancestor. It could be some celestial being. We also have the ascended master type spirit guide. That's getting into the Jesus, the Buddha, the all the, the, these ascended masters of whatever belief system. We get, then we get into the familiar range, which is the animal guides, which could be everything from deceased fluffy who stood by your side always to more like your native american uh, animal familiar like i am wolf i am bear and you take on those magical things to the self-created familiar which get in gets into like i like i work with dragons into you create your own it's called a golem in hebrew an egregore servitor you create your own spirit that you work with these energy energy of dragon energy of fairy energy of what so we have lots of kinds of guys and then the of course the angelic kind so yes you write in your book that we are four elements earth air fire and water how do we keep them balanced okay that's my that is the whole reason i even wrote the book because we in our modern world i everybody's issues whatever love career family money all the regular things that we just survive when looking at it how i said it's about balance we're always off balance so think about it um, any shamanic or works the elements because we are on earth we are of earth on this whatever we fly off to mars one day off to the heavens one day we are creatures of earth if we put our whole self into those four elements air fire water earth think about it. earth is who we are it's our grounding it's the woman's womb it's our home ah that's that's harvey he's this guy he's a host that's our persona how people know us that's our earth that's in the north because everything works off a compass our fire is our passion that's what drives us love sex god art but so basically north and south the person standing there who we are and what drives us the passion that's north and south and those get a little off balance but where we really get off balance is west and east like an airplane going side to side to side west is our water that's our emotions think about it our the water in our body is almost 60 percent of our body the water on our planet is almost 70 percent of our planet it's got to flow and so much we don't want to judge our emotions stuff them down eat them not whatever it's just the flow of water and our air our air element to the east that's our thought process that's our focus that's our breath that's our clarity so if our whole self was in air fire water earth it's basically who we are, what drives us, our emotions and our thoughts. And where do we always get off balance? It's our emotions and our thoughts. What do we need more than anything to survive? Air and water, air and water. So if we go back to that mind, body, spirit, basic psychology and 20,000 books from spiritual books to psychology books to new age books to, um, if we go mind, body, spirit, because we don't usually have an hour to meditate to balance out our mind we don't usually have that i need to take a walk as a rule in our modern times we have 30 seconds to pull it together so if, if we have 30 seconds i just wor worked a way to put that element into that you could do anywhere so if it's my if say if you're not a, every day we should every person no matter what your situation be i'm alive i am happy i am here i have a new start so if you're not as happy as you could be or maybe you're not as productive as you should be well i should be doing this but i'm not or equally important you're not as aware as you want to be because what's happened to us and i even think getting the whole pandemic is we were asleep at the wheel. We became those zombies. I go to work, I come home, I don't think. We, we use the terminology, uh, asleep at the wheel, phoned in, automatic pilot, by rote. That's wasting our breath, wasting our life. So again, if we're not as happy or productive or conscious as we want to be, just go, okay, what's out of balance right now? And one thing is going to be more than the other, but you could, okay, it's my emotions right now. I'm, I'm angry at my spouse or somebody cut me off on the freeway. Doesn't matter, big or little, justified or not, doesn't matter. Held inside and seething or screamed out the window. If it's your emotions that's getting the best of you off balance, that's your water, that, that's your water element. What you need is water, running water. Think how good you feel after a shower, no matter what, right? You do, but you can't jump in a shower a thousand times a day, though I do know some TV writers who do, but you can always find running water, bathroom, sink, kitchen, hose, drinking fountain, pouring a little bottle of water on your head. So if we go to that mind, body, spirit, and you're going, okay, I've got a very, I, I've got to go to, I've gotten a fight with whoever, my roommate, and I've got to go in. Mind, body, spirit. So set your mind. Okay, with it, walk up to a sink turn on the water, 
with this water, I'm going to release the angst, the anger, the sadness, the fear, whatever it is. Run your hands, body, under water for 30 seconds. Water to your body is like an aspirin for a headache. It just works. That's why even in the shower. So you've got them on, you're setting your head. The water's going to do this. You, Madi, you put your hands underwater. Within 30 seconds, you will healthfully release that angst or anger or fear or whatever it is. In a healthy way, instead of holding it in your jaw or holding it in your belly or holding it in your shoulders, you've released it. So then if you need to go have that conversation, you can, and you're not this grieving crazy person. It's like, okay, this is why I'm mad. You can do it. So that's, that's water for emotions. Think of a tear. But so often, because nobody breathes anymore, it's our head. It's I can't focus. I chatty brain, foggy brain. I did, 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 did. We're trying to multitask. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a, you have your podcast. You have a very important thing, and your head's not going together. A conversation, you know, or just working. You're doing your kids' homework, and you just thought focus. That's all your air element. So what you need to do is breathe. And yes, breathing exercises are great and deep meditation. But for to fix it into thirty seconds for me, I had sound. I, I do a lot of heka work, which is Egyptian sound magic. Again, I work in every culture. Every We know that sound affects us. Look at music. Music could excite us, soothe us, fall us asleep, concert, whatever that music, sound, church bells, everything, singing bells. Music affects every cell in our body. Our vocal sound even more so because, number one, it's coming out of our vocal cords. It's affecting our thing. The air in our breath is our pneuma. It's our life force. Yeah. Even the moisture in our breath is our free will. That's why some cultures spit like, oh, what a pretty baby. You don't have to spit, but that's that free will. Again, we are these magical machines. Without giving you a whole lesson in heck, that every, every vowel, every consonant, form or force, what it causes, vowels clear the head, period. Vowels clear the head. If you think about it, every sacred word is a vowel. Amen. Oh, Native American, hey, uh, hey, uh. East Indian, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're falling in love, ah, and roller coaster, ah, opens up this whole crown of illumination. So next time you're going, shut up, shut up, shut up. I can't think straight. I'm foggy. I'm chatty, whatever. I'm overthinking. I should do this. No, he's going to do that. If I did, but, but, but. we hear it. I walk by. Okay, I need the air element. So whether you stand there, whether you're talking to the element of air itself, or you're talking to your brain, or you're talking to God, or you're talking to your guys, with this 30 seconds of deep breathing, with this 30 seconds of vowels, I need to call in the air element. So whether you're sitting in your car, or you're sitting in the ladies room and the men's room going, ah, or om, or e -I -E -I -O, with your kid, within 30 seconds, the chatter in your head will begin to stop. The fog lifts and the clarity comes in that easy. Those two things alone, water and air, emotions and thoughts can be game changers. I've seen people get off psych meds for it because it's just balance. We need balance. And those two free 30 seconds, anybody, anywhere. I'm not feeling grounded that we're getting into the earth. Maybe, you know, we're on something we're just not feeling grounded or many of us travel out of our body or you're at some big interview. Earth is earth. Hug a tree. <laughs> There's something to that. Get, get barefoot, that earthing thing on the grass or the dirt. But if you can't do that, if you're on the 35th floor of an office building, grab a pencil. This little pencil still has the spirit of that tree. It does. Grab a rock, the diamond in your necklace, a crystal, uh, the granite countertop in the lunchroom, the hardwood floor, the wooden deck. This earth grounds, any, any living plant, any rock, any stony earth, grab onto it again. So whether you're talking, ah, oh, spirit of the tree, give me deep roots and branches, or I, I literally, or holding onto a rock or that, you know, granite countertop, I take a deep breath. Everything is breath. I literally feel it like it's almost like this warm earthen blanket wraps around me and I'm safe and I'm grounded. Some people feel it. Oh, like I do feel like a tree with I'm rooted now and whatever, however you do it, but you will ground yourself earth for earth. That is this advice that you give us. You've even given some interesting tips in the kitchen. For example, catnip that's been soaked in water overnight 
should be sprinkled on cinnamon to attract a romantic partner. Have you actually seen that work? Yes, I have. Love is one of my specialties. I would never do a love spell on a specific person because that's bad magic, because you don't want to control somebody else, no matter how good you think it is. Oh, no, I know that person's my soulmate. I get that. Oh, I know if they just knew it, they'd no, no, because you don't want to be controlled. They don't want to be controlled. We could do a beautiful love spell. Bring me the love of my life. Make them funny or this or that, whatever you want, but don't make it on a specific person. If, if that person in your head, if it's supposed to be, I'm going to work on them, but I will not allow people to say their name, picture them because that's controlling magic. So it's not good or bad sin or this, it's that you, we create the world you live in. You control other people, you do curses, you do hexes, you live in a world where you can be controlled and cursed and hexed. Why? You don't need it. So yeah, I, it, catnip is great. Pouring it outside your, outside your, on, on your welcome mat, you're calling in love. Catnip is great for love. There's things you could do in every day. So like make sure if you're looking for love, do you have room for love? Both in your, in your head, is your life so full in your home? Look around your apartment, your house. Is there room for somebody else? That makes a difference in your bedroom. Are they really going to bring them home or not? Is it fit to bring somebody home? Is there room in the closet? Because that's just telling what room it is. Everywhere you go, put your eyes and heart open. You have to, we have to create it and we get it. It's just, that's how nature works. And I love, again, it's like an action for a headache. There's so many things of love in the kitchen. Any red food is passion. It's about love. Eat tomatoes. Apples, my God, since apple, since Adam and Eve, apples are love fruit. They just are. Share an apple with somebody you really like them. You know, you don't put the power onto them, but go out for a slice of apple pie. Well, you say In that we kitchen. should never cut parsley. Why? Uh -huh because it's just one of those things you're supposed to, you know, I remember learning in, in home ec about even with lettuce and parsley, you should rip them and not cut them because in old way before metal knives were when they were all metal, they would mess them up. But it's, it's just one of those things. It likes to be ripped and torn, um, ripped and torn. And then you, uh, it's, I don't know why. Some things I don't know why. Some things make complete sense. Some things just are. Well, let me ask you another one. You wrote that when we're cleaning, we should do it counterclockwise. But when we're stirring food, we should do it clockwise. Why are the directions of the movement so important? Because it's actually gravity driven. It's planet driven. And, and now, so this is completely opposite. Anybody under the equator. If you are in Australia listening to this, it's completely opposite. Just like our water runs down the drain one way. If anytime you're doing anything positive, you're going to go right. Like even stirring your coffee in the morning, I want to put a little energy into my coffee or your kid's oatmeal, put in love, go clockwise. When you want to get rid of stuff, again, above the go counterclockwise. So it's like, I'm getting rid of stress. I'm getting rid of angst, whether you're dancing around a bonfire in cloaks or making your morning oatmeal or you're clearing your house and with house clearing again. So you, we need to clear the energy in our houses. We worry about dusting. We worry about painting and pretty decor. The energy speaks just as loud as everything else. So if you're noticing, it's not always ghosts. There's not ghosts in the corner, but wow, we get angry in this room. We're not creative anymore. There's been illness. There's been staleness. Clear it. So go counterclockwise. Just hit pots and pans. You don't have to have it. I use a broom and push out the bad energy. Hit pots and pans. Get rid of anger and sadness and jealousy over the ex who's gone and any ghost if they're there and shut the counterclockwise. And then it feels really clean. A lot of people stop there, but you don't want to stop there because, and especially for you, people use sage. I, I do have big sage warming warnings. It's it's overused and it's harsh. Sage, everybody says, I sage in my house. It felt so good for a minute because sage, it gets rid of everything, the good and the bad, all the love you put into your house. And it's, it's almost, it's so hard. It almost creates a vacuum. So it's like, it's like dusting your house and then leaving the doors and windows open in a dust storm. So if you do use sage, make sure on your clockwise, you are filling it up with frankincense and myrrh, anything angelic, sandalwood, putting in love. So yeah, I'm going, so I like Palo Santo better burning that or different incenses because it gets rid of the negative, but not the positive. Clean, 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 counterclockwise, push it outdoors, push it out windows. And now you go clockwise, filling it up. Who's allowed in your front door? 
Only people invited in. Only people with respect for me, my home, my family, my roommates. What comes in that window? Sunshine, fresh air, light, inspiration. What is the emotion you want in your living room? Happiness, relaxation, conversation, room by room by room. And then you're filling it back up and there's no room for the bad stuff to get in. Because remember, energy is just as, as, as tangible as not. And so then you walk into the room, maybe you've put a nice soft pink into that room. It doesn't mean you've changed the paint color, but oh, wow, every time I go into my bathroom, it's a spa now. You're enchanting your mirrors with, good body image, good health, good everything that you want. Well, I'm intrigued Work. by your ritual to increase wealth. It involves writing down our wishes on a dollar bill and then burning the dollar bill. It seems counterintuitive to burn money in a ritual to increase wealth. Isn't it? Doesn't it? But it's kind of, think of it like an offering. I don't believe that anybody needs offerings of animals or sacrifices, but I think of what it is, is that we have given money this weird importance, like it's a, it's energy, it's an energy exchange, this for that, like it used to be shells, it used to be this, but we've made money into this big almighty thing. And there's something magic about, again, it's you're burning it. So it's a magical ritual, you're writing what you want, and you got to do it with passion, of, you know, zero co college debt paid off this much money, new car, passion, passion of everything you believe you could have you're writing it and then burning it you are it's like a, it's like an offering to the money gods to the heavens to whatever you choose to believe in it doesn't even and, and you're seeing that smoke waft up and to watch at least an american dollar bill because they're not paper they're some kind of cloth and it's interesting how they burn is this magical and then i'd be there chanting money money here money now money come to me money here money now money make it be but you so you're chanting and your neighbors are going what the heck are they doing but it works i've been doing it since the 80s every time it's just like you get this downfall somebody's like wanted uh 300 for a new computer yeah somebody gave him a new computer instead it's it's, it's amazing it's amazing and you wrote that it's a good idea to hold a rock up to your ear and listen to the wisdom that it has to say to you. But Patty, I tried it. I didn't hear anything. What am I doing wrong? Maybe you didn't really believe. Maybe you just needed to listen harder or listen less hard. Again, as you know, I talk very right brain, left brain. Our left is our reasoning, rational, logical brain that gets us through life, gets us to work on time. The right brain, that creative, intuitive, spiritual artist side, we have to dance, learn to dance between. We have to let to shut the logical brain that going rocks don't talk has to be shut down. And then you will start hearing the wisdom. Every rock, every mineral has that uh, it, maybe it might be easier for you to try a tree. Sit down at a tree with your sitting on the ground with your spine along the trunk they are the wisdom keepers think about it every religion there's the tree of life the kabbalah the kabbalistic tree of life that that is our ancestry trees have so much to say but you have to shut down the fact trees don't talk and then allow it to be and it comes out in in witchcraft we literally do i have my best one? <laughs> my baby version of a broom our best some our witch's broom how we fly is not straddled over it through the clouds we fly through the realms this world that world so in in a craft he said like we're doing magic over here we would lay down our broom on this side of the broom is the mundane world we pay our bills we go to work gravity counts we have to wear clothes when you go out that's this world on this world anything that magic happens fairies exist angels miracles all this so the more you can cross from here to there now rocks do talk now everything you allow it and then you cross back over and the more you separate the two the stronger both get number one you don't become a weirdo there's that weirdo she doesn't shave her arms anymore because she's gone all woo woo so you could live in this world and then when you go into the other world miracles happen you suggest in your book patty that ghosts can have sex actually have sex with humans yeah how does that happen well, it's actually been happening. I love you. Did your homework. Uh, best host ever, my friend. Um, Thank you. I, really? Most people like, have no idea what I'm talking about. No. Okay. Well, I read your book and I, I want to learn more. I'm very intrigued by it. Awesome. Well, I teach classes twice a week. Every I teach for somebody in the UK. I'm going to be part of that school soon. I teach $10 classes knowledge is out there <laughs> but anyway okay think about it it 
sex with ghosts or spectrophilia is official name has been around forever every belief system every religion usually always again the bad rap incubus succubus the demon who comes down and that does exist just like human human sex there's the good and there's the bad there's the consensual there's the not consensual we only want the good and the consensual but it's the bad that gets the rap, just like the news. You're not going to see the good news on the news. You're going to see the bad news. But it's almost a hero story. It almost even gets into religion. A heavenly being of some sort and a human mate of some sort, whether it's the Christ story or the Odin story, whoever that is, or sex. And if you do believe in ghosts, if, um, sorry, that's my 13-week-old puppy upstairs playing with my cat. If anybody wants to know <laughs> the noise, um, if, 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 if you believe in, if you don't believe in ghosts, you don't believe in ghosts, but if you believe in spirits and you believe grandma can come touch your hand in your bed and soothe you, why all of a sudden is sex, which is such an integral part of the human experience, be all of a sudden off the, off the limits that's out of here. That doesn't count anymore because it doesn't um, honestly what my best friend her husband died really young Whoa. um her husband ca cancer whatever and and he came to her and and it was like a closure thing it was like oh that's the touch it was kind of their version of foreplay and it became this beautiful thing and and no one talks about it because number one go, talking about ghosts is is and spirits is is not cool anyway we are a very in our, even our Western modern society, we're very prudish. Talking about sex is not good. So ghosts and sex, ah, forbidden subject, you can't. But sadly, it really does exist. And I've clients and clients, and they sit there at home going, I'm either possessed or I'm crazy or I've got a demon. And so it has to be talked about at least a little. I actually did a film with for Travel Channel, produced it or brought it out. Somebody else produced it. They played it once and it was the good side of ghost sex. It was called Ghostly Lovers. And it was actually almost like a Hallmark movie of these love stories. One was an older woman's spouse died and her husband came back and soothed her. One was another positive experience I've seen with it is when someone, whether man or woman, often usually women, they've lost their just their self-worth, their sense sensuality. They don't think they're good or sexual or sensual with anybody. And they stay away from humans, they're afraid of humans. I've had a few experiences where this beautiful ghostly lover will come in. And that's what we did in the movie. Ghostly lover will come in and, and reinvigorate. I, I don't think they're geographically good. I think they need to be short-term relationships because talk about geographically undesirable. You can't bring them home. They're not going to bring you flowers. You can't take them home to mom. It's a short-term thing, either closure from an old relationship or to reawaken up something that you can move on to humans. But it's it's sad that so many people sit home going, oh my God, I'm having this experience and I can't tell anybody because they'll just think I'm insane or it's, it, it's, it's, so yeah. So, I mean, it's not a large chapter in my book and maybe there'll be more someday because because again, even now the crazy, I, I've gone viral on big national talk shows, but it's the stuff that gets the press besides the incubus, succubus, take over your body stuff is the, the, the kind of crazy woman in the UK who, you know, got engaged to a ghost and wanted to have a baby with a ghost. I, I, I don't think you could do that. No, it's energy. It's just energy. <laughs> so. Patty, I, I want to ask you about your appearances on Ghost Adventures, which is the number one paranormal TV show in the world. Can you tell us about the time you were at a haunted house in the Hollywood Hills during a seance and a cameraman burst into flames? Yeah, yeah, that was where, and that wasn't even on Ghost Adventures um, because I can't get that house for Ghost Adventures. The person who owns it just won't do it. I've been working with Zach and the guys for six, pushing seven years now. It's great. I love it because they throw me into the, to like the most haunted places and I get to go, you know, channel ghosts. I like a challenge, but the uh, Hollywood. Why do some places become haunted? Well, some places, again, energy, strong energy happens. Remember energy, we, we are leading with energy. Yes, on the TV shows, you're gonna see the insane asylum, the serial killer's house, all that horrible things happen and that energy creates, brings in ghosts, creates ghosts. Yes, the stuck serial killers, the prisons, the insane asylum, but there's also as many good ghosts. They hang out at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel uh, or the Hollywood Athletic Club or even uh, Hollywood Forever Cemetery, the American Legion. There's ghosts swinging from the chandeliers having a good time because they liked it in life and they like it in death. 
But the one, the one at the Hollywood Hills home, it was a house actually built by Charlie Chaplin for his girlfriend, one of his many girlfriends, Mary Astor. Um, it was a party house. And whenever you get a lot of heavy drugs and alcohol, you can't bring a lot of dark element in. But it was a big party house, 20s and 30s and 40s. It was, uh, and in the 60s, the Rolling Stones manager bought it. So the Rolling Stones stayed there, Mamas and Papas, Graham Parson. And then they sold it. And then the person who invented the real life sex doll moved in. And then he moved out. And then my neighbor, Marilyn Manson, moved in for seven years. So the house obviously attracts creative, chaotic, maybe sometimes sort of dark people creative so this house had this energy building and we were doing a seance well it was a documentary about the house and being the mary astor kind of party house of the hollywood hills in the day and one kid got disrespectful and you can't it's like with humans be respectful with ghosts be respectful again i'd start out okay if you're skeptic okay but try to be open but be respectful because it's real he was getting disrespectful so first cool things were happening, like the French doors flew open. And I'm like, wow, that's like special effects, though I'd never fake something. And that happened again. And then the speakers on the floor <sighs> came on with like white noise. <sighs> and it's like, but this ghost was getting angry because this kid was being a smart aleck. And then he said something really stupid. We were working with the Ouija board. We were looking at something that happened in the dirt basement. It's always the dirt basement, underground back in the 20s or 30s. And he just said something so stupid, not him, but the cameraman facing him just burst into flames. He wasn't standing in front of a fireplace, like a V up his back, like angel wings of fire. Everybody screaming, two cameras actually caught it. Um, one camera didn't, it hit the ceiling, hit the floor, when this little tiny room was screaming people. And he has camera, he's facing the other way, wondering why is everybody pointing at him and screaming as he's bursting into flames. So a cool, cool witch medium Patty becomes medic Patty, which I am, I'm the EMT, I'm like, drop and roll, I'm calling in my guardians to shut it down and we're done, we are done, I don't care what we're filming. <laughs> Nobody bursts into flames on my watch, this is not okay. I, and so, but the guy who caught on fire, he was a super skeptic. He's like, I'm okay. He, he's like, I, I can't believe this. I, I'm okay. I, I Spontaneous combustion. His shirt burnt off him like poof. And it was a cotton. It should not have gone like a nylon or polyester, but it did. And I'm looking at the blistering on his back. I'm like, oh God, you have to go to the doctor. But he's like, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, I talked to the, the spirit. And I'm like, you, he wasn't even a demon. Demons get way too much credit. He was just a cranky ghost. He was theatrical ghost. Big in life, big in death. You know, Bob the Quiet Banker is Bob the Quiet Boat. Somebody who lived in old Hollywood houses, this big special effects, and he burst him into flames. So he's promised he would be good. The kid who was being the smart aleck it became a choir boy. <laughs> and not another word out of him. We knew he was okay. So we finished the seance. But the, the most cool thing that came out of it and why it all worked that way is the cameraman who caught on fire, Laura Malachi, beautiful French Canadian guy, great filmmaker. He was, he showed me his back. And literally where the blistering on the back, it looked like he had got a tattoo of a dragon open mouth sharp teeth winged head into the shape of a serpent that is the exact energy i called in to shut down the seance i work dragon magic it's crossroads energy whether you believe they're fire breathing beasts they can fly between heaven and earth they live at the crossroads of change very so i'm like it was like oh my god you have a tramp stamp of a dragon on your back and he thought that was just as cool so he actually wrote a script with Stephen Norrington, the guy from the, uh, who wrote the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and the Blade series, and he's very left of center of Hollywood now. So they wrote this script about this TV psychic, this Hollywood psychic, basically about me, who did every TV show, and then a portal opened, and then it turns into a horror film. But I said, they haven't done it yet. I hope they do. But if I sat down with him for five hours, I go, oh, no, Laurent, you can't say that. On, on, you can't have the actor say that. He goes, but you said that. I go, I know I said that. That opens the veil. You don't want to be one of those cursed horror films, do you? Because that's what's happened. That you know, spirits don't know the difference of this is a scripted piece said by an actor and something real. So all you have to do is just make them meaningless words, and you're not going to be a cursed horror. It would be a good old scary film. So I hope if they do do it, it will be a safe horror film. <laughs> do you learn from that now that if you're going to do a seance? you have to really ensure that the environment is safe and that everybody there is respectful? 
Well, I warn them now and with good warning, I do. And because through this pandemic, I've been doing where they used to be, you know, eight to 13 people around my dining room table. Now it's 25, 50 people on a Zoom call. And it's just as connected. We are just as connected right now by spirit. If spirit doesn't have time or space, I can see, you know, your grandma spirit coming up behind you. It's great. And I have this, but everybody knows they have to be respectful or I will shut them down. And, and like, if I'm doing a gallery read, which is that's where you're standing up in front of 40, 400 people, or I do a lot of colleges, I don't throw open the veil quite as wide. You peek open the veil so you can see the spirit. So I can, I, you know, control that. So no, no more fire. <laughs> So Patty, I have to ask you this. You were able to get on Master Chef when you've openly confessed to not even being able to boil water. How did you do that? I'm a good witch. <laughs> no, I did that whole thing. And that shows the power of we as humans. I started out because again, it went to a health empowerment. Uh, I had health issues growing up. My mom took a drug they gave in the 50s and 60s, early 70s, called diethylstilbestrol. They gave it to pregnant women. They thought it presented miscarriages, but they knew it didn't work from before my mom took it. It was the first. So anyway, when we hit puberty, we didn't hit puberty right. They were dropping like flies of cancers and this and that. And I had hot flies, all this. So between 15 and 30, I was a victim of you know, the medical industry, big pharma. Does she have lupus? We don't know. Fibromyalgia, right? Or no, every autoimmune disease like women have now, no children, blah, blah, blah. And so by the time I was 30, the, the prognosis was if you make it to 50, which you probably won't because you have all those carcinogenic things, the breast cancer, you could have this and that, all the DES exposure. And if, but you probably won't. You have a tumor in your pituitary is causing blindness. It's growing because you don't have the hormones. And if you do make it to 50 past all that, you'll be in a wheelchair because you have five fractures in your back since you went menopausal at 15 and never had a period. You've got osteoporosis like an 80 year old. And I went, hmm, no. I went, no, we are powerful beings. I am a witch. I, I know the power. I see miracles every day, whether it's evangelical miracles or whatever, or deep in the jaw. I went, no, every symptom, everything went away. Everything went away. So my first big that thing was at 50, instead of being dead or in a wheelchair, I beat like 80 to 100,000 people and tried out for the world's hardest obstacle course. I got on Wipeout, that crazy show with the two big balls and the 100 foot drops into ice water and burning fire. Hardest, I literally, and I'm not, I was twice as old as anybody there. And I mean, I'm physically active, but not that active to do the world's hardest obstacle course. But through magic, positive magic, I got there. Again, hardest, most painful thing I ever did, most empowering. I was like, I can walk on water now if I could do this. But that's addictive when you go, wow, look at what I did. Not I did, spirit did, energy did. So I went, okay, what? Okay, I, I did the physical, that's hard. Okay, now what am I? I was kicked out of home act. My husband won't let me in the kitchen. I'm going to cook for Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> so I went on the audition. I totally played the witch card. You know, I showed up with a, a boiling cauldron of eye of newt pumpkin soup um, in my antique radio pot. And, um, and I just kept going further and further. I'm going any minute they are going to figure. But I wanted to talk about magical cooking and the energy you put into something. Gordon with his yelling goes into the food. You know, he's really a teddy bear and afraid of ghosts. But I, so I kept going on going any minute they will. But again, I beat another 800,000 people. Next thing I know, I am cooking for Gordon Ramsay, Joe Bastiani, to Graham on the show. We're sequestered. We're in this thing. Again, just as scary as the physical. So it's like, Oh, wow, this is so fun. Okay, what am I really, really not right for? I have no talent for. America's got talent. I have no talent that should get me on AGT. I know they auditions across the world. I'm at the big group audition with 5,000 people at, at LA Convention Center. And I know there are every convention center across the world and these dancers, but positive magic. So I didn't sit there going, Oh, I hope they burn their chicken. I hope that dancer falls down. I hope she misses her note. I was like, yes, you do really good. You look amazing. I hope you get it. All the positive energy kind of falls right back to me. So the next thing I know, I am, you know, rolling around on the floor of the Dolby Theater with Howie Mantel, psychically reading his dog. You know, it was, it was a disaster, a fabulous disaster in every best sense of the way. And so we, again, and that's just a show 
we are amazing beings. We have the power. We just have to stop giving it away to other people, to limiting belief systems, to fear. It, I, I think it's amazing. I do remember your appearance on America's Got Talent. It was unforgettable. And then <laughs> I watched your episode of Beverly Hills Pawn. It didn't look like you got any real satisfaction on that show. <laughs> No, that was a very, that was a very silly little show because I have these beautiful, and I still have them, these beautiful little haunted items. And it's like, no, they are, they are real gold. But again, that was just that kind of a show. That wasn't one of my deeper shows. Um, no. But it's so funny how many people are totally afraid of ghosts. <laughs> well, you wrote in your book that the world is shifting and energy is chaotic and overwhelming. What did you mean by that? Well, look at this world and this i wrote that before the pandemic before all the civil i mean we've always had civil unrest we've always had everything but we when the big part of it is that we literally we are going into the age of aquarius that they sang her out in the 60s age of, we're going from an earth based if you look at your astrological cancers are one way libras are one way earth is, you know we're going from an earth based black and white right and wrong solid ground our parents parents grandparents world is not where this air world things are moving things aren't black and white things are we have to be able to to, to, to float like a butterfly. So, you know, we have to be able to move. That's one well, reason that, I'm so big with dragons. Yeah. Is that what you mean when you say that we have to consciously create our reality? Yes. Yes. We have to consciously create our reality because who's going to do it except for us? We can't control everything. We can't, we can't control how tall we are, where we were born. I mean, I think in Bay going way back, I do believe we pick our parents and all of that, but that's getting into philosophical stuff. But we can't control everything, but we can control a lot. So you change what you can that's not working in ethical, positive ways. But the stuff you can't change, what you can change is your perception of it and that's the everything that's the cause and effect that's the my, my best example is is the is that what is what you do with it is that guy on youtube there's this guy on youtube he was born no arms no legs he's a head and a torso he should be dead i mean he would have to be taken care of his whole life he couldn't eat he couldn't move he could go to, he's a torso and a head he should have been the world's biggest victim for me of living. I've, no, he's a motivational speaker. He comes out, he inspires people on a skateboard and talks and he has a real life. It's what he did with it. And that changes everything. That's the 90%. So change what you can and change your perception and do what you can with what you can. That's the dance. So I have only one question left for you, Patty. Okay. I can't resist. Do you see anything with me? Do you see anyone around me? Do you see any any messages that you get when you talk to me? Yeah, you have a beautiful spirit, Harvey. You do. You're very high vibration yourself. You are very intuitive yourself. You just overthink it a little bit, as we tend to do. You get beautiful intuition. You're very creative. I can tell that. You're very sensitive. You're very sensorial, aren't you? Affected by smell and color and taste and sound. So you can use that. You do. You have a woman stands behind you to the right, probably a relative of some sort. Could be mother, grandmother. But do you ever notice anything feels more on your right side than your left side? Yes. Yeah, she's right there. She's there guiding you and helping you. And she might play with your ear sometime a little bit like, what's that? Because this is our full crown of illumination. So yeah, you, you have all sorts of beautiful guides. And you're again, this beautiful high vibration spirit that you yourself, the what you bring to the world, that scent comes off you. It's beautiful. Well, Patty, I have to tell you, I'm totally fascinated by your energy, by your concept of how we can all enhance our lives by utilizing positive spells, positive rituals, positive perceptions. I really appreciate you coming on our show and enlightening us about all of this. Thank you so much, Patty. Thank you so much for having me on. Best, best questions, best prepared host ever, really. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Harvey. Again, you guys, magic is everywhere. You just got to look sometimes. Our guest has been the Good Witch of Hollywood, Patty Negri. My name is Harvey Brownstone. Thank you to our producer, Steve Silver. Thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Remember to subscribe to the Harvey Brownstone Interviews YouTube channel. And be sure to check out more great interviews with Harvey Brownstone on HarveyBrownstoneInterviews.com.